is this generation more evil than the last? And I wanted to circle back how you said the West is falling apart. Yeah. I believe that it's kind of, and I always go back to biblical references, not because I'm an annoying Christian, but I just like truth. And I, and I notice that truth comes out of these testimonies that I see. Yeah. And the one thing that I've realized with humanity, God or no God, it's your access. Yeah. And I think that's why God reflects the heart. He doesn't reflect your actions. Yeah. He reflects your heart. Because yeah. let me give an example, pornography. I don't watch porn. The reason why I don't watch porn is one, um, it's unhealthy. I, for me, I, before, before you carry on, I don't watch porn because it's genuinely uninteresting. Like it, you it's put, weird. You can put porn on and I'd be like, yeah. I, 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 I just don't, I don't get it. But yeah, that's the thing. And also, um, for example, I like to practice the monogamous relationships. Yeah. I genuinely do believe that porn does numb the brain in somewhat way. I can't really go into it scientifically, but because um, I'm not qualified and don't know too much about it, but that's my personal belief on on from the information that I've gathered. Really, that um, you know, porn isn't that good for you, and as well, you know, I, I don't believe any addiction. Is, is really that good for you. There has to be a balance in everything. Um, but what are these young guys supposed to do when they've really not got much to do and they've not got no goals and aspirations and all that kind of stuff? Uh, they just they just turn to porn because it, it, it gives them that thrilling moment for just a short time. Um, and, and then they go back to just living the normal, boring lives. And if maybe if they had something really exciting and, and really fulfilling that maybe they won't, they won't digress so much and, and, and switch to porn and it, and it won't be that daily addiction all the time. When I get married one day, I know my girlfriend's not going to be at the prime model look when yeah. she's 50 or whatever yeah. she is. Yeah. So I got to practice that this is the only woman that I have. It's Correct. diligence. Correct. Um, okay. So opening up the access, look at a man who's watching pornography. There was a, there were, okay, I, I fall off the wagon every once in a while. I'm not sitting here saying yeah. that I'm perfect. Um, uh, about a year, maybe two years ago, I, I was watching porn and there yeah. was, it, it, back in the day when I was growing up was like your stepmom. Yeah. And to me, that was always weird because I'm like, dude, that's your, like, still it's your mom. Yeah, yeah. Now it's your mom. And then when I, like, wow. freaking, like last year when I tried, I did a, a, a a KSI and Sidemen um, thing. We was impulsive and Sidemen. We did this collab, and there was a girl who does porn there. And I made a joke, and I go, "Look, I'm stuck," and and it, and it went viral. And I realized I'm like, everybody laughed at this joke because they know what I'm saying. And it's this porn style thing where if women are stuck, then men would come and have sex with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. of course it is. Yeah, that's right. Yep. And these men are enjoying this. Yep. So what is this teaching them? Yeah, that's not that's not healthy for the brain. All this kind of like um, these setups that they do with the with the porn videos, like you know, I'll bribe you for this or that. And a guy walks into an office and she's like, "Oh, I've got uh, I've got no money or I'm late for work." And you know, they do the act like, um, and now he's saying it's even down to mums. That's just twisted, so twisted that you could take what doesn't belong to you. And I think a lot of the things that they're programming these kids to do actually comes first through pornography because you watch it in secret and you're not really dabbling with your men, what you're watching. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a mustard seed that grows. Yep. But then the question is, are they doing it on purpose? This is where you go deeper down the rabbit hole. Pornography is bad for a society. Mm -hmm. Let's accept that to be a fact. It, it is, it a is fact. true. Okay, yeah. so pornography is bad for a society. Okay, why are they trying to destroy the society? Who are these people? What is their end goal? Is their end goal the sexualization of children? Is their end goal 12 year olds to sit there and watch pornography and want to have sex? Is their end goal to confuse 12 year olds to want them to try and change genders? Is that their end goal? I don't know. Is that why they take down the, the, the country's flag and put up another flag? This is another thing you have to, to, to understand. We talk about the Western world being fallen. Do you mind moving that mic towards sure. your mouth? We talk about the Western world being fallen. What even is the culture of the Western world anymore? We have gang signs and we have frozen food and we have the pride flag. What else? Like what even is there anymore that unifies us in any regard? I mean, I think I, I'm pretty sure, and I've, I've never tested this. I don't want to find out. I'm under enough matrix attacks. But if you were to burn an American flag and burn a pride flag, you do more time for burning the pride flag. It's a hate crime. So it's, you have to actually then understand is, okay, if this is destroying society, is it being done on purpose? And what is the end goal of it? And who's doing it behind, who's doing it in the first place? And then, then, then it gets really scary. I agree with everything you're saying about pornography. And I agree with everything you're saying about monogamy. I'm just trying to analyze the world and how it actually functions and how do you fix these things? And 
setting examples, leading by example. My, my question to you is this. Let's label uh, this group of people that you're, you're – let's just – I want to label so we can always circle back to it. What would you like to call them? The oh, Matrix? The Matrix. The Matrix. So the Matrix is uh, there. Do you feel like the Matrix is hyped up using media? Because we think about it. When I walk around and I have discussions with people, not a lot of people have the same agenda that the media is having. And I think people are keeping up with it. So do you think they're, they're flexing their power? Let me give you an example. Yeah. God is all powerful, all strong. Yeah. The devil isn't. But yeah. what his power is is lies. Yeah. So he confuses you. God uses faith. The devil uses fear. Yeah. Do you think the Matrix is just full of shit and they're just fear-based? Oh, they're absolutely fear-based. So what, are, what, 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 what is your goal? If you had to fight, like you are fighting, and you're banned from, what, what are you banned from? Like, Everything. But you're on Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm, Elon bought Twitter and restored me. Before this, I was banned on Twitter also. I'm banned Why on- Why did you get banned? I got banned because you get three lives. And the three lives are first, you get canceled and banned absolutely everywhere. That's crazy that like, it, obviously we know that Maybe probably like a year and a half ago now, he got banned off for everything. Even like got his uh, got his privileges revoked from even stopping at like hotels and stuff like that in the UK. They sent him loads of emails saying that he weren't allowed to come to the hotels anymore. But now that Elon Musk is running X, um, Andrew Tate's back on there. So, but he kind of never left YouTube anyway because people like us. Uh, other plenty of other people they're constantly putting up his content on YouTube and stuff like that. So you know he, he's not allowed on YouTube, but he's, he's actually is he, is there more than what he was years ago. So it, it's it's funny how this works and, and the power of people spreading the message of Andrew Tate really. And you know he's, he's got a lot of interest. Like he says, he's the he's the most Google man on the planet, as he likes to say. So that that's interesting to know that he's back on Twitter as well. And the second life is they try and put you in jail for something you didn't do. And then the third life is they assassinate you. And I'm now on my second life, as most people have experienced in real time. I got banned because I became monumentally popular. I became hugely successful. I became the most Googled person on the planet. And then they make up a reason to get rid of you. And I'm banned on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Uber, Airbnb, Gmail, WhatsApp. You can't get an Uber? I can't get an Uber, no. Gmail, WhatsApp, you name, you name an application. All for standing up for what you believe in. Well, yeah. I mean, I made some satirical jokes, of course. And Could they you give me an out. example of something that you've said that you may have crossed the line? I don't think I ever said anything that truly crossed the line. I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to stand by this because I don't believe in regrets and I don't believe in sitting here and saying sorry for anything because I'm not a coward. If I made a video 10 years ago that got 84 YouTube views... And me and my brother were joking about how women can't park and women shouldn't drive. Yeah. And then I became the most Googled man on the planet. And then that is found. And then a bunch of feminists get upset by it. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up over that. That's life. Yeah. Oh, well. Shit happens. But also, but, like, stand-up comedians make the craziest jokes. Like, I was in a comedy club and they're already making jokes about Palestine. And of course. I mean, uh, comedians make jokes and rappers sing about murdering people. So it's, it's completely a double standard to come along and say that whatever I said was enough reason for me to be canceled. Well, that scares me because cens cens censorship is the scariest thing to me in, Bro, in the world. I definitely agree with that. Definitely agree with that. That, you know, in, in, in one sort of sense, you've got Cardi B saying that she, she gives date rape to guys or whatever, drugs them and then robs them. And, you know, I, I was listening to a, a last the other day saying that she'd hide bodies for a fella. This is on a song. Like, can you imagine if Andrew Tate said that he'd, he'd, he'd hide bodies for his missus if she killed someone? It's crazy to think that, like, these people, they get away with it and they get paid for it and they're glorified for it. But, yeah, coming from Andrew Tate, um, it's all poison. So he's right. There's definitely some double standards going on. Maybe some triple standards. Who knows? Point: Can we not worship our God? My phone. I the day the cancellation started, I opened my phone and app by app, one by one, logged out, logged out, logged out, logged out, logged out. And in sync, I was sitting there for two hours, and every twenty minutes, a new one would just log out. Were you scared? I knew the Matrix was real. I knew how the Matrix operated. I knew that there's but were a centralized you scared? power. I, I was scared because I knew I'd used up my first life. And then I started saying on all my podcasts, they're going to put me in jail for something I did not do. When that happens, you have to know it's a lie. And I said it about 15 times. And then seven months later, I ended up in a cell. So I understand exactly how the world works. So yeah, I was scared. But I also believe, and I draw a lot of strength from my religion. We talk about God. I think God gives you strength. And I also believe one of the primary objectives of a religion, which ties back into what we were saying earlier about how the world could be fixed if men and women stay together and monogamy. I think the primary objective of a religion is to preserve a culture. 
if a religion doesn't preserve the culture, then it's failing in some regard. You should look at a religion and look at the culture underneath that religion and say, okay, it's a successful religion because the culture is adhering to its creeds. So I understand that it is my battle, if I believe in God, to try my, my best to preserve the culture. And then you're asking, how do I fight the matrix? I think you fight that by a masculine empowerment, and I'll tell you why. Because we were just sitting here talking about how the devil uses fear, mm. and you're completely correct. And I think that women are easier to scare than men. And I think that now we live in a society, especially in the West, where women have been empowered to the point, well, I'm not, I'm not against female empowerment, I'm not a misogynist, but they've been empowered to the point where they're more powerful than men in most scenarios. They're mm. more powerful than men in the divorce court, most powerful than men in the custody court, more powerful than men in terms of the education system, more powerful than men in terms of their testimony, more powerful than men, I'll, I'll give you a, endless examples. If I totally agree with that, totally agree with that, the fact that like, Everything that is just said about how, how now the women are more powerful than men, that is definitely true. Women get believed in court system. Women get uh, more custody over the kids or custody over the kids and really get to decide what's going on uh, when it comes to the children. Although, you know, taking a child from the mother or father is a disease that you're, uh, that you're giving the child, I believe, a, a mental disease because every child should grow up with a, a, a father and the mother and it completes them as a set. So, but it, it, it's not like that nowadays. A woman can literally move to the other end of the country. As I know some of my friends, it's happened to their, to, uh, with them and their kids. Their exes have moved to the other end of the country, 400 miles away, and there's nothing that they can do about it. And yet they've still got to pay child maintenance, although they can't even get to see the child because they have to work and stuff like that. Some very personal people as well. The, 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 these women can, hurt you when it comes to children unfortunately more and more women are doing that hurting the kids to hurt the father and it is just so wrong and men get murdered nobody cares if 10 women get murdered it's gonna be a national news story for weeks their life is more valuable and i'm not saying it shouldn't be it always has been because they can create life my point is we now live in a society which i believe is a matriarchy it's feminized and men are feminized by extension and men being feminized means that women are in charge and women are fearful so let me give you a very simple example of why I believe masculine empowerment is how we actually get closer to God and how we fix the, the fight we're in against the matrix. COVID. COVID was emotional arguments. They came along and said, your grandma's going to die. The old people, your grandma, your grandma. They used emo emotional arguments. Emotional arguments to create fear. That works on a woman. A woman sits there, I love my grandma. Most men would sit there and go, wait. Let's just chill. Yeah. Let's we'll see mean, what happens. Grandma's already 94. Grandma's die. So I don't think we should be taking our kids out of school. Let's just calm down. Men are more stoic and more patient. If you had a household where the man's been feminized and the woman's in charge, it's over for that house. They're full COVID cocks head to toe. 10 vaccines. If you had, <laughs> they are. If you had my household where my girlfriend ran in, did you see the news? Shh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. Okay, and so, then it's fixed. So wait, 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 so, but no, but this right, is the point. Right. Fear. You're yes. talking about fear, the devil using fear. Absolutely correct. How, how does he scare people? He scares cowards. He scares people who can't fight. He scares women. He scares people who are not, who are not prepared to stand up and resist. So masculine empowerment is absolutely not really how you battle the devil. You need men to be as strong and capable as possible. Okay. Th this is a great, great uh, 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 pivot that I want to say. Everything you just said that I agreed with. Everything you just said that I agreed with. The only problem that I see is when you were like, ah, shut up. Let me give you an example. Here's the reason why. Everything you just said was absolutely correct. And as a man, I could look at you, and if I had children, yeah. I'd be like, yo, listen to this man. He's, he's being very, very correct. Now, my girl's going to be like, well, why did he just tell his girl to shut the fuck up? Like, I said shush. Yes, yes. But okay, let me give you an but example. I was dismissive with my hand. No, I know, but you know what this means? Flicking get, the diamonds. Get the fuck out of my face. Shh. This, like, this is what every girl here, shut up and go make me a sandwich. This is what, this is what comes off. So you're fighting getting men to be like, yes, but then you turn off the women. Here's the problem. You're trying to make men more men. But men, before they listen to you, are listening to the girls because they just got a girl. They don't want to lose them. They right. did everything that they could to get this girl. Correct. So here's the thing. When you see a fireman bust into a building that's on fire, yep. he's not going to look at the person and be like, what the fuck? Why did you do this? Da, 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 da. He's going to be like, hey, it's okay. Look at me. Grab my hand. Come out. Yep. Why can't you take that approach? I think I am. and That's interesting because I, 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 I do. <laughs> it's funny. It says something so intellectual. 
and he, he gets everything right. And then, like uh, George said, he does the shush at the end. Uh, and that just completely puts women off. And a woman is not even going to listen to what he's just said because he did that at the end. And that, that that's just the way that they are. They're not really going to take the positives. They're just going to take the negatives and focus on them. So I think you need to cool down a little bit with that, Andrew. You know what I mean? Because I know you respect women, but just show it a little more. <laughs> 